Okay, so we've looked a little at um, bonding and how atoms bond together. Now we're going to look at some properties of bonds. First, we're going to look at bond order, bond length, and bond strength, or bond energy. And we'll look at how these three things are related. So bond order is simply the number of shared electron pairs in the bond. So that means that if I have a single bond, the bond order is 1. Double bond, the bond order is 2. Triple bond, the bond order is 3. Bond length is the distance between the two nuclei that are bonded together. So that those two things are pretty straightforward. Okay. So now we're going to look at bond energy. Bond energy is the amount of energy required to break one mole of a particular type of bond in the gas phase. So again, bond breaking is always endothermic. It always requires energy to break bonds. Bond formation is always exothermic. Energy is always released when bonds are formed. So um, bond energy does change depending on what a particular atom is bonded to. So even though I have the same atom bonded to something else, um, depending on the whole structure of the molecule, that bond energy can change. So when you look at a table of bond energies, that's an average bond energy for all different types of bonds of that type. So let's take a look at this table, a table of bond energies. You um, can see some of the trends that we can look at here are if we look at my carbons. <coughs> this would be bond order 1, bond order 2, bond order 3. So as bond order goes up, bond length goes down. So triple bonds are shorter than double bonds, which are shorter than single bonds. And then the other thing you'll notice is that bond energy increases with increasing bond order. So single bonds require the least amount of energy. Triple bonds require the most amount of energy to break. So that's the relationship between those three measurements, bond length, well, actually, two measurements, bond length and bond energy, as they relate to bond order, which is simply a count of how many pairs of electrons are holding two atoms together. If you remember back from the thermodynamics chapter, we can use these tables of bond energies to predict a delta H for a reaction. So here's a <laughs> typical type of question, estimate the enthalpy of formation of gaseous hydrazine N2H4. So remember, enthalpy of formation means formed from its elements. One mole of product formed from its elements. So if I look at the reaction to get one mole of hydrazine, this is the reaction that takes place. So enthalpy of formation is for one mole of product. So the next thing you need to remember is that to calculate delta H from bond energy, it's equal to the sum of the bonds broken, the energy of the bonds broken, minus the bonds formed. And this is the opposite of everything else because this is reactants minus products where pretty much everything else we do with any kind of thermodynamics is products minus reactants. So that's why it's easier to think of bond energy in terms of broken minus formed. That way there you don't get confused. So in order to do this we need to look at some Lewis structures. Nitrogen looks like this. I have two hydrogens. They look like that. And I have one hydrazine which looks like this. Oops, we'll do the lone pairs there. So there is my hydrazine. So let's see, what bonds do we break? We break one nitrogen triple bond, and that is 946 kilojoules of energy. So that bond is broken. Plus, we break two hydrogen bonds. They are 436 each, multiplied by 2. So that's the bonds broken, minus the bonds formed. The bonds formed are one nitrogen to nitrogen bond, which is 163 kilojoules, plus four hydrogen to nitrogen bonds. Each one of those 
has an energy of 389 kilojoules per mole. So there's my setup. I do this math to get the delta H. So delta H for this reaction is a 99 kilojoules per mole. So that's using delta H uh, bond energies to calculate delta H. So that would be an endothermic reaction.